This little video details the development of what I'm calling a magic telephone. A dear friend of mine recently passed away. We were planning a memorial celebration in his honor, and I wanted to make something that would help people connect to his memory and enable them to share stories, or in a sense, talk to him. There's something about a classic phone that feels intimate and personal. So I bought an old rotary phone off Craigslist. The rotary section itself is pretty straightforward. I cleaned out some lint and dirt and added a few drops of 3-in-1 oil here and there. Electrically, the rotary section is very simple. There are four wires for two switches. One closes for the duration of a dial. The other is normally closed, opens for about 40 milliseconds per pulse, and then closes for 65 milliseconds until the next pulse. Here I'm removing a potted component that includes a terminal block and I think perhaps a transformer. It won't be used and I'll need the space for the Raspberry Pi and the audio interface. Another pair of wires indicates when the handset is off hook. That switch is normally closed and opens when the handset is picked up. There's actually a second pair of wires that does the exact same thing, but slightly later as the handset comes up. I used the first, but it wouldn't matter. The wires to the handset and to the wall were a pain to work with. Very thin ribbons of copper wound around a fiber core. But I wanted to preserve as much of the old phone as possible, so I used them. There is no electrical shielding in these old wires, so hum would be an issue. More on that later. I tried to use the wire to the wall for the power to the Raspberry Pi. I spliced the wall ward at the end and spliced again inside the phone. Unfortunately, the old wire presented too much resistance and the voltage dropped enough to cause the Pi to malfunction, so I ended up just using the wire from the power supply. You can see here that I'm hot gluing and double shrink wrapping the splices. Since this will get a fair amount of abuse, it needs to be sturdy. Fortunately, the phone is built with burly metal strain relief clamps that hook into the chassis, so that will be additional protection. The heart of this phone is a Raspberry Pi Zero W. That's the new Pi Zero with the wireless chip. A miniature USB audio interface connects via a miniature USB on-the-go adapter. There are three wires to the handset, which will be wired as common ground, mic, and speaker. As romantic as the idea of reusing the old mic and speaker elements is, I took them out, having neither the expertise nor the time to worry about that. The filtering imparted by the handset offers plenty of old-time charm to the sound as it is. I used a scavenged headphone speaker and, for the mic, a Panasonic WM61A Omni Electric Element that I had lying around. Probably any electric element would work fine, as the sound source is right next to the mic anyway. The USB audio interface provides plug-in power to the mic capsule. So electrically, it's all very simple. Just a few different switches wired in series with 1K current limiting resistors to the GPIO pins. Working out the timing kinks with the switch debouncing and pulse dial detection took a little experimentation, but wasn't too painful. I used a AAA battery in series with the pulse switch loop and connected it to my main audio interface to confirm the pulse timings. A poor man's oscilloscope. I investigated the possibility of making the ringer ring, but it turns out to be somewhat complicated, so I skipped it. Once the hardware is all wired up, the operation of the phone is up to the software. I decided to present a dial tone, and when the first digit is dialed, the user hears a ring, and then it plays one of ten short audio clips of my friend's voice. Then they have the chance to record a message, as if leaving a voicemail. I configured the Pi as a wireless access point and installed a lightweight web server. This allows someone to log in with their smartphone to play back files the phone has recorded, reboot it, shut it down, etc. The idea is to make it relatively plug-and-play for non-technical people. The Pi is running stock Raspbian with a custom Python script that runs on boot. Overall, this setup has been very stable and problem-free, except that every now and then I've seen the Pi have some buggy issue with the GPIO pins requiring the script to be rerun. Not sure what's going on there, but it only happened once or twice. I soldered directly to the Pi GPIO pins. You can see here that I installed a push-button switch in an existing hole in the chassis to be used for shutting things down. It's accessed from the bottom of the phone. The push-button switch has an LED built into it. I went with the classic Raspberry Pi trick of wiring that to the serial console transmit pin, number 8 on the board pinout, in series with, from memory, a 100 ohm resistor. This power button fit almost perfectly into the existing hole. I just had to grind a little plastic off of it. When it is pushed, the software shuts down the Pi. When the LED built into the button goes out, it's safe to unplug. You can see here the white audio interface hanging off the Pi. I used a couple eighth inch plugs and soldered to the back of them to connect to the handset wires. Ground the negative wire for both the mic and the speaker. Tip of the mic jack to the positive mic wire and tip of the speaker jack to the positive speaker wire. 
Okay, time to stuff it all in there and try to neaten the rat's nest up a little. Some kind of padding to cushion and insulate the pie from the chassis will be needed. At some point I also use one of the existing screws to tie a ground wire into the chassis to help with shielding. This view shows the layout a little more cleanly. I think I ripped everything apart again because I was debugging the power supply issues with the old wiring. Now I've swapped out the old wire with the regular power supply lead and am wiring everything back up. So many wire nuts. I'm sure there's a smarter way to do this. The speaker was pretty straightforward, but the mic was a little more finicky. It's not shown in this time lapse, but I ended up needing to cut a wooden disc to cover the space in the cavity. Otherwise, the cavity acts as a resonant chamber and the recordings sound crazy. I also needed to wrap that wooden disc entirely in grounded copper foil, with the mic element poking through a hole in the middle to maximize shielding. Overall, it still picks up a bit of hum. I suspect a shielded wire between the body and the handset would solve that, but it was tolerable as it was. This is unprocessed raw audio recorded from the phone. Not bad at all. Since the bottom of the phone chassis is grounded metal but the top is plastic, I also covered the audio interface and associated wires and some copper foil, which you will see later. In terms of the speaker, I started with a crappy headphone speaker and it wasn't very usable. The output was too low and it sounded bad. I switched to a speaker from a slightly nicer pair of junk headphones and it was much more functional. Again, despite the nicer speaker, it still sounds like an old phone, not to worry. It took some dialing in of settings and also mixer to get the input and output levels just right. Overall, I wouldn't change anything with this build. Everything worked reasonably well, and people that have tested it have found it an emotionally powerful experience. The software isn't bulletproof, but it works fine. It's amazing how easy it is to make someone think they are using a real phone. If you hooked into some kind of VoIP service, it would be pretty easy to convert this into a usable phone. You can check the hoop de hoo below for links to the Python script source and a parts list.